Okay, um, in terms of our audits and, and our audit tools, um, and, uh, you know, all the, the applications that, that go along with that, um, there are things that we need to do to protect those tools, to, to assure ourselves uh, that, yes, they are operating properly, that, that we're not missing something, that somebody is not uh, attacking us and then removing the evidence of the attack. So, uh, you are going to have to strictly control access to online logs. And, of, of course, you know, um, the immediate uh, uh, logging that takes place on a machine is, is taking place on that machine. It's, it's there, it's, it's online because it's on that machine. But, um, you know, do you store them in some location that is accessible uh, in other ways? And of course, you know, yes you do because you are storing the logs over a network. Uh, and so, you know, what is the storage of that machine? Uh, uh, what kind of access um, does it have? You know, who, who gets to have access to that? How uh, well known is, is that going to be? So, you know, access to those logs has to be very, very strictly controlled. Um, we need to ensure the integrity of the data. And uh, there's also the um, non-repudiation. Uh, so we, you know, uh, may make use of digital signatures to protect those records and ensure that um, those records are reliable and we can prove that they are in fact reliable uh so you know uh hence the the non-repudiation aspect of that um there are uh possible things that you can do in terms of access uh to the logs um you can use for example, some kind of, uh, you know, instead of just storing it to a hard drive somewhere uh, or a solid state driver or something like that, have a write once device, uh, you know, like a, a CD ROM, uh, a DVD um, that is not rewritable. Um, and so that we can write those, those logs and then nobody can mess with them. Nobody can overwrite them. Nobody can uh, uh, change any entries in them. Those, those logs, you know, the, uh, those devices, uh, as I say, write once. That's, that's it. It's, it's carved in stone or at least in, in metal foil in, in plastic substrate. But, uh, you know, that, that gives us some protection against people trying to access those logs and make changes to them. Um, use strong access controls, uh, you know, make sure the, the access controls are appropriate to it, uh, least privilege comes into play here. Um, you want to protect the confidentiality because, uh, of course, these logs can contain all kinds of things, uh, not the least of which is, is login uh, credentials uh, may be recorded in, in these logs. So, uh, you know, make sure that that is, is covered, dealt with, um, possibly encrypted, uh, you know, what, uh, well, of course, even encrypted, uh, that, uh, allows for, um, you know, dictionary attacks and, and that sort of thing, if people can get access to it. So, um, you know, protect the confidentiality, um, uh, use encryption as it's appropriate um, for these uh, types of situations. Um, so, you know, uh, protecting all of that. Now, um, at this point, just to, to reiterate, because uh, we're, we're going to explore this um, and, and reference it uh, again and again and again, um, the alarms. Uh, you know, we may have uh, detection alarms on on these systems, but also, you know, just in terms of the, the logs themselves, the intrusion detection systems, um, uh, so many parts of this and, and so many other parts of 
uh, uh, you know, different security tools are alarms, and any alarms do comprise the three components. Uh, there are the the sensors, um, and we have to make sure that the the sensors are, are sensitive enough for the task at hand. We have to make sure uh, that they uh, are not too sensitive, that they're not, you know, forever going off and, and therefore uh, teaching people to ignore uh, the alarms uh, when they actuate. Um, uh, there is a communications or control system. So, you know, in, in this case, I mean, we've, we've talked about the fact, okay, we've got our, our audit logs, uh, which are in a sense, you know, that's the, the results of the sensors. If, uh, you know, that we store that information somewhere, we, we have to deal with the communication. Um, we have to protect the communication and we have to protect the storage. Um, so, you know, we've got a communication or control system that's that's part of uh, the alarm system and, and we need to pay attention uh, to what that's doing and whether or not it's doing it appropriately uh, so there's you know that is a second part of, of our alarm systems in general and and we have to pay attention to those and then there are the the actuators now uh, in terms of our uh, audit situation in, in terms of our uh, report management tools, our uh, incident event management tools, um, we are dealing with um, uh, reporting to a person to, to make a decision. And, and of course, we need to provide enough information to the person, we need to possibly provide uh, some backup information or, or the ability to uh, query it and um, uh, find out what they should be querying. Um, and and so the actuator part of the alarm system should have you know those necessary details. But of course. Uh, you know, not a, a flood of data, you know, we, we need to, you know, fairly early on in, in that actuation, uh, say what the problem is and, uh, you know, possibly even recommend some course of action. Um, but those, uh, uh, you know, that, that needs to come to people and, and as previously mentioned we have a number of uh, opportunities um, these days um, when we're dealing with this we can have a um, uh, uh, an email system um, we can have uh, texting to cell phones uh, we can even these days have uh, voice calls over cell phones and and report these uh, these details, so that becomes the the actuator uh, then for our alarm system, which is the you know event management system that we are are dealing with. So. <laughs>